Welcome to Commissioner's Corner. I'm Char Burnett. I'm joined today by our newest county commissioner, Mr. Ed Wolf. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here. This is the commissioner's first show on BCAT, so we're helping them get um, underway today. But first of all, Ed, I want to congratulate you, Commissioner, on your election. Thank you, sure. And give us an update. Um, just give us an update on your background first. Tell everybody who you are. Um, lived in Bremerton for 17 years. Practiced law here for 17 years. Originally from Washington, D.C., working for the federal government. And I like being here a lot. My wife and I love Kitsap County. Mm -hmm. Did you have, did you do the Seattle and Bremerton thing for a while? Did you we, have a business there? Well, I did for many Practice. years, even living here. But we decided uh, we fell in love with the community, sold our house in Seattle, and moved over here and never looked back 17 years ago. 17 years, that's yeah. great. Commissioner, tell us about your first three months in office. How has it been? You mean about the fire hose down my throat? <laughs> exactly. Which is slowly being removed. Um, it's been a big change from practicing law for decades to you know, working on policy. And uh, that was my first career at the State Department, working on policy. And I like the policy side of this. It's working out beautifully. Good. And it couldn't be happier. Excellent. District 3, Silverdale, and parts of Bremerton. Mm-hmm. Big district, lots of things happening in the commissioner's district. Yeah. So let's get started with your show. Tell right. us who your first guests are. Today I have David Schultz. Uh, David uh, is the CEO, new CEO, president of Harrison Hospital from Overlake. He's going to tell us a little bit about the hospital, its plans, what's happening with the move from Bremerton, his background. Secondly, uh, we will discuss with Tina Robinson, the first woman ever prosecutor in Kitsap County. Uh, she'll tell us about her job and what she does at the courthouse in the prosecutor's office. And I think it'll be exciting for most of the viewing public out there. Great. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome Kitsap County. My name is Ed Wolf. I'm, as you know, I'm a, a new county commissioner, I'm new in this position. And with me today, I have David Schultz, the Man. new president of Harrison Medical Center, or Harrison Hospital. David's going to tell us a little bit today about what the plans are for the hospital, mm -hmm. where you came from, what your background is. So let's start out with that if we can. Before we say that, before you start out, let me say, you've got big shoes to fill. Dave Gitch has been here forever, mm -hmm. been a friend to many of us of all the community, as has Scott Bosch. And, yes. But we're confident you're going to fill those shoes. Well, thank so you. Yes. Tell us a little bit about yourself, if you will. So uh, I've been here since December, mid-December, so I'm new to the community. Uh, but I've lived in the Puget Sound, specifically over mm -hmm. in Bellevue and Issaquah for the last seven years. Uh, so it's familiar to us. Um, have a master's in healthcare administration. Uh, started out as a unit clerk. Uh, at a hospital down in Texas, and so I've kind of grown up in healthcare, love it, um, and so I'm very glad to be here and representing Harrison in this community. And I think you told me you were a golfer, just to, for the record. I, I'm a fair weather golfer, fair weather yes, golfer. so. Just to make sure. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about, if we can, David, about the, the Harrison facilities and what it provides today to Kitsap County and what you see as the future in terms of what it will provide to Kitsap County residents. Great. So actually, Harrison has a comprehensive set of services that we, we offer uh, anywhere from our cardiovascular program, mm -hmm. including the open heart uh, uh, program, which is for a community this size, uh, quite a treasure uh, and something that we uh, expect to continue, certainly. Uh, but our cancer services, our orthopedic hospital here on the Silverdale campus, uh, certainly our women's and children's. Mm -hmm. uh, I think what we will develop more and more is our primary and mm -hmm. our urgent care service line so that we continue to increase access to the community, mm -hmm. uh, continue to provide the most affordable care as close to the community as possible. So we'll continue to work on those things. But uh, overall, we provide a quite comprehensive set mm -hmm. of services. And I think, um, if I remember correctly, Harrison has been in 
the national news, or at least the regional news, about its heart center. Yes. Uh, this has been, been developing probably for the last four or five years, but uh, is, this is national recognition, isn't it? It is national recognition for our outcomes. We have excellent set of providers, both of our two cardiac surgeons, our cardiologists mm -hmm. on our team, uh, certainly uh, the support system that, that helps the whole program. Uh, so it starts with the people, and we have very good people, which allow us to uh, treat our patients mm -hmm. well with excellent outcomes. Speaking of people, how many people, how many employees are there today at, at Harrison? So just under 2,500, actually. We've been growing. Uh, we recently acquired uh, advanced medical imaging and Olympic radiology here in the community, and mm -hmm. so that's added to our ranks of right at 2,500 people. Mm -hmm. Not only is Harrison growing, but I'll point out to uh, our friends at home that this, this central area and all of Kitsap is just exploding opportunities. People are moving here right and left. We've got to control that growth, I believe. We can have that economic development in hospitals, but we've got to control that and protect our environment too. Yes, absolutely. And I know you'll do that here because you'll be doing a lot of, yes. a lot of growing, I would imagine. That, that's a key uh, on the Silverdale campus. One of the key things that we can do is protect uh, the environment, protect uh, this campus, if you will, mm -hmm. the Clear Creek trail yeah, that runs yeah, through, yeah. certainly try to enhance it and still mm -hmm. make it a very welcoming campus for mm -hmm. the public to mm -hmm. come onto, whether or not you need health services. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, from an energy efficiency standpoint, we'll try to remain as green as possible as we mm -hmm. develop this campus. Mm -hmm. So yes, I agree with you completely. We need to take care of our resources and, mm -hmm. and uh, certainly still create a, uh, you know, a healing environment for our patients. Yeah, and I'll say balance all of that because yeah. we can have economic development in our county and, and we can also balance uh, the environment that brought many of us over here, I think, in the first place. Um, let me see. One other question was, this is a very uh, topical question, uh, David. The, the merger, and I'm not even sure if I'm using the right word, but the combination merger of Franciscan and Harrison, can you just tell the public a little bit about sure. that and what it means and what changes we can expect to see here yeah. after many, many years of just Harrison? Yeah. So we, we have formally called it an affiliation mm -hmm. uh, with the Franciscan Health System based in Tacoma. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been, uh, you know, new to us mm -hmm. at Harrison, certainly, and mm -hmm. we're still learning each other. But there are a lot of benefits of joining Harrison, both from a clinical expertise standpoint, mm -hmm. and meaning if you can get providers together that have mm -hmm. different experiences, mm -hmm. perhaps are seeing different types of patients, mm -hmm. and you could create a forum, which this affiliation does, where those experts can get together and debate what's best for mm -hmm. the patients. Okay. They do that. Uh, the affiliation has given us access to capital that mm -hmm. will allow mm -hmm. us to complete this Silverdale campus mm -hmm. earlier than Harrison would have been able to do mm -hmm. on its own. Mm -hmm. uh, and finally, I just want to share, it also helps us create new access points mm -hmm. for healthcare. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the best products that I've seen, and, and quite frankly, I wish we had where I came from, was the virtual urgent care services. Mm -hmm. And just the ability to, from your phone or your iPad or from your computer mm -hmm. at home, mm -hmm. contact a primary care physician uh, if you need it and, and help with mm -hmm. some general uh, conditions of where should you go, what mm -hmm. level of treatment. Mm -hmm. That's the type of low cost, easy access that I think we will develop together as part of Franciscan, but certainly Harrison mm -hmm. to lead the mm -hmm. you know, Kitsap County okay. and the health services here. Speaking of Harrison, Franciscan and, and the, the new relationship. I was talking to a very, with a di very dear friend last night, uh, Dr. Les Salmon, who founded the doctor's yes. clinic. Les was the first surgeon in 1951 at Harrison in yeah. Bremerton. And I said, Les, I'm gonna be on TV tomorrow with David Schultz, and yeah. you know, tell me what you think about the move. And his quote was, I'm disappointed, of course he was there for many, many years, mm -hmm. but I'm happy if it's gonna provide better services uh, and more efficient, or not efficient, he said, uh, uh, easier access yeah. for the patients. So that's quite a, quite a grouping of words coming mm -hmm. out from someone who's been at Harrison and Bremerton for 40, 50 years. Mm -hmm. It is, and you know, Dr. Sam, and I, I point back behind me because uh, you know, Salmon the Medical doctors, Center, yeah, Salmon Medical Center is right behind us, and so I think he probably in the doctor's clinic had a lot of foresight about what mm -hmm. was happening in Silverdale. This location is much more accessible mm -hmm. than the current Bremerton mm -hmm. uh, facility. It's also much larger. Uh, there's only seven acres in the current Bremerton mm -hmm. facility. This is over 30 acres. Mm -hmm. uh, so the ability to provide parking, sure. easy sure. access to, to navigate uh, mm -hmm. the campus is gonna be much easier here. Uh, so I, I think we're well positioned in, in Silverdale to, 
to enhance the services that are already provided here. And that was his point about easier access. Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned um, earlier, David, that uh, uh, primary care would become uh, a, a very important part of the of, of the practice here or, or of the center here. Mm -hmm. um, what about cancer? Cancer will we will actually have a consolidated cancer center of excellence here on this mm -hmm. campus. Mm -hmm. and, and what I mean now is we have some of our oncologists in mm -hmm. one location. Mm -hmm. They may be in another location. Uh, even on on the Bremerton mm -hmm. campus, they're in different offices. And so we will consolidate it and in essence build a new cancer center mm -hmm. that'll be part of the uh, the complex here. It will also be part of the medical office building mm -hmm. that we build on this mm -hmm. campus as well. So we're going to, not just for oncology and cancer, mm -hmm. but we're going to do that for cardiac services as well. So we'll get the providers in a more consolidated, unified uh, format. Mm -hmm. Again, just to help that dialogue about mm -hmm. what's best for the patients and do I need this service or that mm -hmm. service. They'll be together for the first time in, mm -hmm. in quite a while uh, for Harrison. It sounds exciting, and you, I know you've got a very active board. Uh, how about the transition team with regard to Bremerton, Harrison, to Silverdale? What, what's the status of that, and where is that process going? So there's a, there's a lot going on, actually. Um, we have a transformational change team that mm -hmm. we're just now organizing that is really focused on our, our people. Mm -hmm. uh, how are we going to handle this with our mm -hmm. own employees? Mm -hmm. uh, we need to be able to uh, really manage the level of change. At the same time, that same team will focus on the new Silverdale campus mm -hmm. and the new processes that mm -hmm. we will implement. Uh, they will be um, based on the lean principles mm -hmm. so that we can mm -hmm. create as much efficiency. Uh, we also then have uh, multiple teams set up that will deal with the individual mm -hmm. campuses that we're going to construct because we will be building a new facility in Bremerton as well. Urgent and, care type of yeah, facility? Yeah, and urgent care, primary care. Uh, may have some additional mm -hmm. ancillary services. Mm -hmm. There's uh, a Bremerton Community Advisory uh, mm -hmm. group that we've gotten together with representation. Uh, and Mayor Lynn, I believe, is involved yeah, in that. Mayor yeah. Lynn's involved yeah. in that, and, and so multiple community mm -hmm. members. And mm -hmm. so they're helping us point out what specifically should remain or be enhanced within mm -hmm. uh, the Bremerton offering. And so a, a lot's going on. There'll be uh, so much focus on this that we have very, uh, we've contracted and or employed people that mm -hmm. will focus solely on those tasks. Yeah, a lot of work ahead. Yeah, very much so. We're being so efficient, the two of us together, that uh, I've pretty much run through everything I want to talk about. Yeah. Would you like to add anything that I haven't asked uh, about the mm -hmm. hospital and where you're going with your plans, anything at all? Well, I, so thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be in the community. I think that's first and foremost. Uh, my wife and I and our two children look forward to be, becoming part of the community. I think Harrison's very well positioned now that we're affiliated with the Franciscans to not only focus on Silverdale, but mm -hmm. it's not about the building, it's about the care we are going mm -hmm. to provide in that building. And that's, I just want people to know that's going to be our key focus is the care that we provide, not just the four walls. Thank you, David. Kitsap County is going places, Silverdale is going places, and I can tell you the Harrison Hospital is going places. And we're proud of this facility here and all the people that are in this facility. Thank you, Kitsap, for joining us today, and stay with us because we have Tina Robinson, the first woman ever prosecutor of Kitsap County. I'm sure she'll have a lot to tell us. Uh, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Commissioner's Corner. I'm Ed Wolf. I am the Kitsap County Commissioner from Central Kis Kitsap, District 3, and with me today I have Ms. Tina Robinson. Uh, Madam Prosecutor Tina Robinson, welcome. Thank you, Commissioner. Just a little bit about Tina, and then I'll have a, we'll have a nice dialogue, I hope. Um, I'll point out to the public that Tina is the first woman prosecutor ever in Kitsap County. Uh, at least going back 75 years, but I'm probably not close on my numbers. She also handles all prosecutions for, or her office does, for felonies down to assault, murders down to assault. Um, she's had four careers. You may tell us about those four careers if you like, uh, Madam Prosecutor, but I know one was in the Air Force, and the other was uh, uh, in the medical field, the healthcare field, uh, defense uh, defense attorney, public defense attorney, and now the first woman prosecutor in Kitsap County. 
Um, that's, Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner. And that's, I think you've about got my, um, my background. I went into the Air Force uh, right out of high school. I was just barely 18 years old. I did 10 years in the Air Force. And after getting out of the military, I um, ended up in the management side of the medical field. Um, did about 12 years of management with eight of those years uh, here in Washington at uh, Group Health. Mm -hmm. um, went to law school in my 40s. So um, that's when I finally decided to pursue the, my childhood dream uh, and go to law school. Uh, out of law school, I worked for a private firm um, representing um, uh, indigent persons accused of committing felonies. I did that for about four years before I went to work in the public defender's office doing the same work. And I did uh, all felonies from property crimes, mm -hmm. possession of drugs, all the way up to murder. And then, of course, I was elected uh, late last year and began my work as the Kitsap County Prosecutor in January. Um, that's, that's, your, that's your background. Uh, very, very impressive. I should tell the public that we are located today in courtroom 212 in the Kitsap County Courthouse. Probably, I think uh, the prosecutor would agree with me, it's, it's the oldest courtroom in the, uh, in the entire county or in the courthouse. Would you agree with that? I believe it is. Uh, and I would also add that uh, just to supplement uh, what uh, the prosecutor does, she also represents all of the departments, all of the agencies in Kitsap County, uh, anyone that's elected, she is the civil attorney, or your office is the civil attorney for, for all of the departments in Kitsap County, including the Board of Commissioners. They are our attorneys also. So we've got more attorneys than we know what to do with. So let me start out by asking just a few questions. You talked about your background experience. Tell us a little bit about, if you would, the, uh, the office itself, uh, the department, how many how many prosecutors do you have, and uh, how many employees, and, and what services do you provide uh, within the department? Okay. Um, well, as you probably know, Kitsap County Prosecuting Attorney's Office is the largest law firm in Kitsap County. We employ about 40 attorneys. We have uh, three investigators, two, our own IT staff, so we have two mm -hmm. IT people, mm -hmm. and about 30 support staff. Um, we have several divisions. One you've mentioned is the mm -hmm. civil division in which we advise all of the county officials like the Board of Commissioners as well as all the department heads um, concerning legal issues and we also uh, represent the county in any litigation mm -hmm. whether we are the plaintiff, whether the county is the plaintiff or the defendant. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a child support uh, enforcement division uh, district Court, Municipal Court, which prosecutes infractions and misdemeanor crimes. We have a juvenile. Then there's the next is our felony division. And in our felony division, we actually have five different units, which includes our juvenile division, um, special assault unit, which prosecutes um, crimes against children, sex crimes, and um, uh, domestic violence crimes. We have the uh, vice unit. It's a new unit that we've created, uh, which prosecutes drug crimes, human trafficking, um, promoting prosecu prosecution and gang related crimes. Yeah. And uh, our general trial unit prosecutes everything else um, in, in the felony unit, uh, except for our major cri crimes mm -hmm. such as murders, mm -hmm. they are divvied up among all, everybody gets a chance to mm -hmm. do those. We also have an appellate division mm -hmm. as well. So um, pretty large organization prosecuting uh, crimes, every crime you could think of. And I believe, uh, if my memory serves me correctly, that uh, prior to your position today as prosecutor, you actually uh, handle murder, tr murder trials in your, your previous life as a defense attorney, is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. Do you miss the trial, do you miss the courtroom? I do, okay. I do miss the courtroom. Okay. How many employees, if you, if you told me this, I apologize, how many employees are there in the prosecutor's office? About 75. 75, and how many of, the, of, of these are um, litigators or, or lawyers? There are 40 attorneys. 40 attorneys, okay. <laughs> Wow, pretty big operation. And in your caseload, uh, you, you mentioned you go from murders to, to uh, assault. Uh, or do you have statistics on which type of case is, or which types of cases are uh, more predominant in the prosecutor's office? 
Uh, well, obviously the misdemeanors, there's going to be more misdemeanors than there are felonies. Um, I can tell you that this year we've had probably about um, 1,300 referrals to our office, and that's just in the two and a half months. Um, about, um, only about 560, 550 of those are felonies, and the rest are uh, infractions or misdemeanors. So mm -hmm. the, the majority of them are the misdemeanor mm -hmm. variety. But and a lot of property crimes, I believe. A lot of property crimes, which is one of the... In kids or in the state? Well, Washington State has the uh, largest uh, problem with pro property crimes in any other state in the, in mm -hmm. the country. Mm -hmm. That's correct. But major felonies, I, I believe, if I'm correct, would be lower in Kitsap County than the rest of the state. That's correct. That's some good thing. Uh, yes. Some good thing. Can you speak, uh, uh, Tina, about what your goals and what your priorities are for the prosecutor's office for the next four, at least the next four years, if not beyond the next four years? Well, um, actually, my leadership team, which is about 14 people, just met last week. Uh, last Wednesday to um, sort of define what our goals were going to be. And we're still actually defining those. We're, we've, it was a great work group, a great work day, and we're still defining who we want to be. But, uh, you know, the main thing that we want to do is we want to be a prosecutor's office that works collaboratively with the community and with other organizations to keep this place safe. Mm -hmm. We want Kitsap County to be a safe place. And, um, we want to focus on aggressively prosecuting certain crimes, but at the same same time mm -hmm. being um, open to uh, other alternatives and therapeutic uh, options and rehabilitation so that we're not keeping people going through the revolving mm -hmm. door. And as a long-term goal, working with the community to, um, once people get, get in our system, it is really difficult to get out. Mm -hmm. And I think that as a community, we can work to try to keep people from going back in. And that starts while they're in jail or in, in prison in getting them reintegrated into our system where they can get jobs and they can find places to live and, mm -hmm. and uh, these sort of things so that, and have the other resources available to them so that they become pro productive members of our community. And by that, we can stop the revolving door that we've had. And isn't this, if I believe you told me before, is this one of your priorities? It is. And weren't you recently at the Purdy Institution, the Purdy Woman's Institution, along these lines? I was, um, not this past Saturday, but a week ago mm -hmm. I was at, uh, it was a TEDx program out at, um, at the Correction Center. It was an all-day event. You know, it's about, it's called the talk. The talk. <laughs> and it's actually been done in other organizations. The X is for prison system. And um, so it's, it's getting people to talk about how we can do things differently and, and what can be done while people are in prison. And I think the Purdy Correction Center, the Women's Correction Center, is, has a lot of programs. They figured out that they need to do things, even for people with long-term mm -hmm. um, uh, sentences, so that once they do get back into the system, they, they have some sort of skills so that they can, they can be a better mm -hmm. productive member in the community. It was a, there were um, speakers from all over the country that were there and it was a, it was an excellent event okay. and very encouraging. And, and a priority as, as you, you've mentioned. So most people probably are not aware of the prosecutor's office, uh, the responsibilities and duties, unless they read in the paper that so-and-so got so many years for doing something bad. Um, what can the public expect from your administration uh, in terms of changes in the prosecutor's office, if any at all? Well, one of my hopes is, is that the community, the public, will, will um, actually have more confidence in us as a prosecutor's office because that we are being uh, more um, proactively uh, transparent. In other words, not just in our annual report showing this is what we've done, but as things are happening and as we're, you know, dealing with particular issues or uh, as somebody has been sentenced, that we are letting the public know, that we are telling them what's happening and they're not just hearing it from, from the news 
from just a police report, but they're actually hearing from us. And, and that ho hopefully through that, they will have more confidence in us. Um, one of the other things I'm hoping that they will see is as we, as we more aggressively prosecute things such mm -hmm. as the property crimes and um, things that, are, that need to be prosecuted aggressively, that the criminals will figure out this isn't a place they want to commit crimes and they'll stay away and therefore our public will also benefit and notice that. So there's a, there will be an informal program to, to make the prisoners not want to come here. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> um, talk to us if you would briefly about areas of, of crimes that are becoming more predominant or more prevalent in, in our local community in Kitsap County. I know you and I have had conversations before about sexual trafficking and sexual exploitation specifically to Kitsap County. Mm -hmm. Is that an area that's becoming uh, a problem area in our county? You know, it is. It is a problem area and we have actually prosecuted, um, I think we've pro probably prosecuted about a dozen um, defendants for, th for that particular type of crime. We've had a couple who have gone to trial and have gotten significant sentences from 40 to 50 years in prison. Um, but it's not something that people necessarily recognize. And in fact, as a defense attorney, even as we were, were defending certain people, uh, I didn't recognize how much of an issue it is. Um, our office is taking a lead in, I think in the state, in, in working these kind of crimes. And they are crimes that are, have to be worked they don't just come to you. Mm -hmm. Are there signs that the public can look for with regard to the whole area of uh, sexual exploitation, uh, human trafficking? Can parents or family or friends look for certain signs? You know, there are. And uh, to be able to go through all of them, there are actually, we have this list of 10 characteristics of a trafficker as well as 12 warning signs that someone is being uh, trafficked. And I'm not sure if there's some way that we can um, post them maybe on the BCAT website or, or whatever so that... It's an excellent idea, excellent idea. What we'll do is we'll get the list from you, post them on the BCAT website for the Kitsap public. Um, Madam Prosecutor, I want to thank you for being with us today. It's been a real pleasure. I look forward to working with you for the next four years or longer. And I'd like to thank uh, Kitsap County for joining us again for, for Commissioner's Corner.